First Warn Weather Forecast First, sponsored by Anderson Collision Center. Visit driveanderson.com. A little bit of an active evening across the area. We had some severe weather that worked its way through the area. Some severe thunderstorm warnings that were issued were out for winds that were up to 70 miles per hour. That whole line of storms mainly remaining south of Highway 20, but now working its way much further off to our east into the Chicago area and even further off to the east of that. So things are quieting down here locally for a lot of us here this evening as temperatures falling back down into the 60s. Not too much further to fall for those overnight lows because of how close some of these dew point values are to the actual temperature. So we're only falling a couple degrees more at the very most for many of us later on tonight. But we return to the 80s once we get into tomorrow afternoon. Lots of sunshine for the afternoon, but additional rain chances starting to work their way in, although much more scattered than what we had today. I'll time those out for you and let you know what the rest of the weekend brings coming up in your most trusted forecast a little later. Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 10 starts now. There were dueling demonstrations just blocks apart in Rockton. They were both motivated by a controversial library event. Plus severe weather in Boone County yesterday. With a tornado, we'll show you what the storm looked like from the air. The Rockford Police and Fire Departments team up to help people most days. However, this week was all about winning bragging rights. Good evening, I'm Jess Lipson. Eric Wilson is off tonight. All day we have been taking you to Rockton for the protesters at the Talcott Free Library and a pride party at a local park nearby. It was all in response to the drag Q&A that took place Friday. We are fighting a tremendous battle here today. The Talcott Free Library moved their drag Q&A virtual Friday. However, that didn't stop Rockton Pride from getting an in-person gathering to celebrate the day or protesters from standing outside the library hoping to have their voices heard. What today has shown us with the, the outpouring of donations and support and the people that are here today, Rockton is a very inclusive town and we, we are here to celebrate this community. Libraries should be a place of learning and not indoctrination into things that uh, a select group of people want to want to promote um, and we actually believe that they're promoting an agenda that is basically designed to eradicate all sense of normalcy. Those outside the library were led by the Rockford Family Initiative protesting the drag Q&A put on by the library. But there are a lot more things that need to be done. Um, this is just the first step. You know, we're trying to mobilize the community to hold our board accountable, hold our library director accountable, and that requires a vigilance and, you know, future activities on our part. Rockton Pride organized the party at Village Green Park, knowing that even if they had to be virtual for the Q&A, they could still enjoy it together. The event included what organizers call a family-friendly drag show. Rockton Pride also showed off a $1,000 check thanks to donations they plan to give to the library in hopes of continuing their events promoting inclusivity. We're just out here supporting the community, showing everyone that drag is diverse and it can encompass many genders, many expressions. Um, we're really just showing what queer happiness looks like out here. For more information on Rockton Pride or the Rockford Family Initiative, visit our website, mystateline.com. A shooting leaves one man fighting for his life. Rockford Police Department tweeted out around 7.30 that a man had been shot near West State and Elm Street. Officers say the man has sustained life-threatening injuries. The department asks people to avoid the area as they investigate. Two Belvedere residents are arrested on drug charges. The state line area narcotics team searched a house cor at Coral Lee Drive in Belvedere today. They found 100 grams of cannabis along with cocaine, pills, and cash. 23-year-old Javius Schrader and 45-year-old Angela Schrader were arrested. The 23-year-old is facing a long list of charges, including possession with intent to deliver. Both are being held in Boone County Jail without bond. The man accused of killing three people on a party bus in Rockford appears in court. He's set to learn how long he'll spend behind bars. Raheem King was convicted on several charges, including first-degree murder and armed robbery back in 2020. In April 2018, King opened fire on a charter bus near Auburn and Johnston Avenue. Martavius Blake, Dejan Sistrunk, and Sean Anderson died. King claimed he was acting in self-defense because the men pointed guns at him. Prosecutors argue it was a planned attack. He faces life in prison. We've got a clip to share with you of yesterday's tornado that briefly touched down in Boone County. 
This is drone video from Crocker Aerials. The camera is just east of Belvedere. Looking northeast during the 20 minute time lapse, you can see an EF0 tornado form, touch down, and then go back up into the clouds. People only reported minor damage with leaves and small tree branches down. One person is dead after a single car crash in Sycamore. This happened just after four near an intersection of Plank Road and Luther Lau Lane. Police say the car left the road and hit a tree. The driver died on the scene. That person has not been named while family is notified. Investigators are now looking into what caused the crash. There's been a change to the rules when it comes to riding a motorcycle in Illinois. Right now, motorcycle riders younger than 18 have to take motorcycle safety classes and pass a riding test. The new bill Governor Pritzker just signed gets rid of the requirement to also take tests again at the Secretary of State facility. The Secretary of State's office and safety groups both believe this will result in more riders taking the classes and free up SOS resources. Investigators released the name of three people killed in a Greyhound bus crash in southern Illinois. The bus hit three semi-trailers parked near a rest area on Interstate 70 near Highland, Illinois, early Wednesday. That's just outside of state St. Louis. Louis. Video shows the side of the bus peeled open with the roof crumpled. The victims were all of, on the bus. They are Juan Vasquez Rodriguez from New Jersey, Buford Paya from Arizona, and Bradley Donovan of Springfield. And TSB is now looking on the scene of, into the crash. Rest area safety is going to be one of the things we'll be looking at closely here. It is my understanding that this is a matter of state law, and it may vary from state to state. That's something we're still uh, seeking to determine. Uh, we'll look at that very closely. Uh, we'll look at the circumstances under which those vehicles were located where they were. And again, if recommendations are appropriate, we will certainly make them. Fourteen other people were injured in the crash. Community members voiced frustration with the Barbara Coleman project. Fifth Ward Alderman Gabrielle Torina, Landmark Illinois members, and Rockford residents attended a news conference today. They believe the City Council botched the Barbara Coleman project. Monday, Alderman approved an amendment to the plan requiring a labor agreement, th threatening the deal. Supporters say it's been a while since they have seen the community come together like this. No, we're not going to give up. Um, we, we have had some projects we worked on in the past that, that we were not successful. We understand that. But no, we're not going to give up. We're going to push until there's absolutely no possible way that would happen. Yes. Alderman Mark Bonney told us he plans to bring up a revote on the labor agreement at Monday's council meeting. Rockford's first responders earned bragging rights as part of the annual Battle of the Badges. This competition benefited supplies at the Rock River Valley Blood Center. Center administra administrators held an award presentation for the victor. Rockford Police and Rockford Fire have competed all week to see who could collect the most blood donations. This year, Fire Department won. That ends Rockford PD's five-year winning streak. Both departments' heads say the competition is far from over. So I will tell you right now, we were on our way to a six-peat and that didn't happen. So I'm not pleased with that, but we will keep the competition going. So Fire knows we're coming for them next year. Well, we're pretty excited, obviously, um, because it's been a, a number of years since the fire department um, won the Battle of Badges. So we're excited and challenged. So there's that. Fire had a total of 248 donations. Police brought in 203. Both departments encourage people to donate blood, saying you never know who will need it. Medical experts are warning people about an, uncom an uncommon form of cancer, Oral cancer is a rare form of cancer that accounts for 3% of cancer diagnosis. Affecting more than 50,000 people last year, oral cancer, including cancers in the throat, tongue, and gums, this type of cancer usually develops in those who are 40 or older. Tobacco use and drinking alcohol have also been linked to mouth cancer. An oncology nurse says it may be time to see a doctor if you are experiencing symptoms like mouth pain or bleeding. Numbness of the tongue and white or red patch in the mouth or a lump in the neck. Know when something is not right. Have a regular routine checkup with your dentist. And also follow up with your doctor when you know something is not in the right way. And also my main take is I need patients to have an established relationship with their doctor. Experts remind people to pay attention to their body because prevention is as important as the cure. One local woman is receiving national recognition for her work. Coming up, we hear from those who inspired by her work every day. 
A local caregiver gets major recognition for her work. She never expected anything like this, but believes it's all because she just loves her job. Mikel Delgado sat down with the award winner to learn more. Ready? Good morning, left side. Good morning. Good morning. Carrie Lacaraza has been a caregiver for over 20 years and calls it the best decision she's ever made. But receiving the National Caregiver of the Year Award was a shock to her. This is beyond, I never in a million years did I think this would happen. I come in here and I take care of everyone. I make sure they live their best lives and that's it. And I didn't expect anything out of it. Jean Bergren lives at Siena on Brenwood and tells me she's never missed one of Carrie's fitness classes, saying Carrie gives them a sense of security and that they matter. It feels so good to know that you have somebody here that you call at any time and you feel safe. The world would be so much better off if we had more Carries in this world. It would be nice. And if we, you know, if we love her, we do. Carrie beats thousands of others and awarded a crystal trophy along with a $2,500 check and an extra $1,000 to show the work that she does is valued. Visiting Angels of Rockford, Daylin Davis calls Carrie a true leader in this field. The little things that she does every day, but on top of that, like what she does for this community, for her clients, which is her people, um, she goes above and beyond at any time that the, that the call asks for her to. One example of that is what she did during the ice storm this past winter. I stayed overnight and worked the next morning. That way our residents had someone here because if not, who's going to take care of them? Carrie tells me she loves the residents here and wouldn't have won this award without them. To me, they come first. They need me. And in turn, I need them. That was Nikel Delgado reporting. Today we had mostly sunny skies until the clouds rolled in this afternoon. Up next, Jordan is in to tell us if we will need to the umbrellas this weekend. Miss Jordan Wolf. A fairly active evening for our severe weather later on is what we got into the evening hours, especially after the afternoon heating and lots of humidity helped to prompt a lot of these thunderstorm activity that we had early in the evening. Still plenty of reports across the area. Not really a whole lot here locally. We did have some tree damage just near the Ogle and Lee County border further off to the western portions of those counties and then the much further off closer towards Chicago area. That's where a lot more of those particular uh, reports came in because there are a lot more people that are over there and so the reports of damage is a lot easier to report to the area when you have a lot more people in that close area of contact. So this is kind of what we had early into the evening, what we were looking at with some of these storms that worked their way through. Originally just one cell just to the west of Joe Davies County split off from the rest and then it just kind of like worked its way through the area, kind of a line or a cluster of storms, which what prompted numerous of those severe thunderstorm warnings, mainly once it got closer to that Interstate 39 corridor and further off to the east of that. So this is kind of what we saw early into the evening is we had a lot of energy for those storms to work with and that's what helped to keep those storms going even later on into the evening as the sun started to set. Now that the sun has set all the way, things are a lot calmer. When we look our sky, our sky track camera overlooking downtown Rockford is brought to us by Window World up on the Supply Corps building. Temperatures at the moment still a little bit on the cooler side, but not dropping very quickly as we still see many temperatures in the mid 60s with those dew point values not too much further behind. Temperatures for the rest of the night tonight because of those dew points and temperatures being as close as they are not going to fall very quickly. We're only down maybe a degree or so more from where we are at the moment. Still holding on to mostly cloudy skies and an isolated chance for a rumble of thunder mainly once we get after the midnight hour tonight. Once we get into the afternoon tomorrow temperatures do work their way back up into the mid 80s with a lot of sunshine as well. A cold front slowly sinking its way closer is going to not only switch our winds around from the southwest to the northwest but also bring us another chance for some showers and storms into the afternoon. Most of the activity now clearing, but we could see still a rumble of thunder or a stray shower or two once we get after the midnight hour tonight. And then once we get into the afternoon, that cold front does work its way through, helping to bring us an isolated chance once again for a scattered shower or storm. Not as widespread as what we had today, nor not anything like what the severe weather that we had. But once again, another isolated chance. And again, once we get into Sunday as well. So things are looking at least a little bit calmer as far as the weather is concerned, but we could see some wildfire smoke 
smoke returning to the area because all of our upper level winds helping to draw some of that smoke from southwestern Canada into our region. That's going to keep our skies a little bit on the hazier side, potentially with some of that smoke getting drawn closer to the surface with a couple of those cold fronts that look to pass here over the next couple of days. 85 is where we head for the afternoon tomorrow. 82 on Sunday, a little bit more of a scattered chance for those storms on both of those days. Some dry time once we get into Monday and Tuesday, a little bit cooler for that, Jess, but then working our way back up and more active weather once we get in the middle of the week. Thanks, Jordan. There's been an increased focus on UFOs recently, and Washington is no exception. Coming up, lawmakers want the government to reveal what they know about these mysterious flying objects. A New York man has been charged with the murder of three women and more than 800,000 people in the U.S. will see their student loans go away. Those are a couple of the top stories across the nation. The Biden administration announced today it's given credit to those who had paused their payments or made late or partial ones. It says payments that should have brought a person closer to paying off their balance weren't accounted for. Under the student loan system, the government cancels any remaining debt once the person has made payments for 20 to 25 years. The U.S. Department of Education will contact those impacted. This step comes after the U.S. Supreme Court blocked a different student loan forgiveness plan last month. DNA on pizza crust led to investigators to a potential serial killer on Long Island, New York. Rex Huerman, an architect from Long Island, is charged with killing three women. He's a prime suspect in, the for in a fourth murder. Skeletal remains were found along an oceanfront highway in 2010 and 2011. Prosecutors say investigators linked him to taunting calls to one of the victim's relatives, using the victim's cell phone following her disappearance. Lawmakers are calling for a new federal commission to force the government to reveal what it knows about UFO sightings. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is backing the measure with bipartisan support. It would give a nine-person review board power to declassify government documents about mysterious objects spotted in the skies. The proposal sets a 300-day deadline for government agencies to gather their records and present them to the board. Scott's in next with sports. A former Green Bay Packer took the mound tonight at the Rivets game. Scott will tell us about that next. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. Well, the Rockford Rivets are about more than developing young baseball players. They're also about bringing entertainment to the 815, and that's certainly the case this weekend. Starting tonight now, throwing out the ceremonial first pitch before the Rivets game was former Green Bay Packer George Teague. He played safety for the Packers after they took him in the first round of the NFL Draft in 1993. He had 15 career interceptions, including the longest interception return for a touchdown in Packers playoff history, 101 yards. At the University of Alabama, Teague starred on a national championship team. And tomorrow night, he'll be one of the legends who will play in a celebrity softball game at Rivet Stadium. We know Teague can play football. I asked him how much softball he has in his background. Well, you know, the, the good thing is I had, did play a lot of softball games when I was with the Green Bay Packers. We did a game for five years, I guess, there, and then I just try to stay active and try to be the best athlete I can. You were a highlight film returning, you know, interceptions and for touchdowns, and you had great speed. How's the speed these days for George Dean? Well, I can't say that I'm still running the 4-3 that I used to run um, back then, but uh, I think I can get up and down the first base line a little bit and maybe beat out some of the throws of <laughs> some of the other celebrities. Well, we will see how he is on the softball field tomorrow night. The Legend Celebrity All-Star Game will start at 6.30. Some of the other legends will be former Packers, Jermichael Finley, Antonio Freeman, and Amon Green. Michael Singletary, the Bears, will be there. So will former Cubs, Andre Dawson, and Mitch Wild Thing Williams. Tickets are still available, so make plans to come on out. Fox 39 is one of the main sponsors, and we'll have some of our crew out here participating in the game. Now for the Rivets Growlers game tonight. Top of the first, the Growlers chop one to third. David Bishop charges but mishandles it, and the Growlers got a run for a one nothing lead. Bottom of the second, another defensive lapse by the Rivets. The base hit to right gets by Rivets right fielder Connor Allen. That plated two more runners. To the bottom of the second, another defensive miscue. This time, though, by the Growlers. Pitcher Adam Berghorst throws the ball wildly past first. Andrew Delaney heads for second base. Meanwhile, Nick DeMarco comes on home. Right now, they're still playing ball. It is 3-3 three three in the seventh inning. The Beloit Skycar are back from their all-star break. Rusted up and ready to go against the Cedar Rapids Colonels tonight. Top of the second inning, the Colonels 
Jorel Ortega blasting one off Alex Williams. He goes yard for the solo homer and a Cedar Rapids lead by one. Williams will rebound from that. Comes up big to end the third inning. Here's the fans, Emmanuel Rodriguez, to keep the deficit at one. But then came the fourth inning and the wheels started to fall off. Two walks and Ortega at the plate again and this time the knock into center field that scored another run. Still nobody out in the inning. Tyler Eckberg taking the mound for Beloit with the bases loaded and Jose Salas chops it through the infield. That brought in another run, an eight run inning for the Colonels and the Sky Carp lost 15 to two. Game two of that series will be tomorrow night. Cubs and White Sox also got back to work tonight, hopefully refreshed from their break. What a tough assignment for the White Sox. They were in Atlanta facing the winningest team in the majors, the Braves. This one did not go well for Michael Kopech in the first inning. He gave up this grand slam to Matt Olson, Olson's 30th home run. Kopech also walked four batters in the inning. He retired only two batters before being pulled. In the seventh inning, Ozzy Albies does some more damage for the Braves as he would blast a Brian Shaw pitch into the gap to drive in two more runs. Sox got clobbered in this one, nine to nothing. Yeah, they're gonna be sellers at that trade deadline. Cubs were at Wrigley where they hosted the Red Sox. This looked a lot like the White Sox game. Second inning, Rafael Devers with a home run off Kyle Hendricks. In the third inning, it looked like a replay as Devers again goes deep off Hendricks. On the bright side for the Cubs, Cody Bellinger raised his trade value. He hit two home runs. He now has 11. Final in this one, Red Sox eight and the Cubs three. That's sports, we'll be right back.